Five years ago, we bought bare land to build a house. One of our first needs was a water system so we could stop carrying water in seven gallon jugs to the property from offsite. Drilling a well wasn't feasible right away, but it was in the long-term plan. So we built a system that would serve our needs immediately as well as in the future. That system was 2,000 gallons of underground storage at the top of our hill that would gravity feed to our RV and later house. We were off-grid at the time and planned to remain off-grid, so we used gravity to our advantage. We still had to haul our water, but we could do it in larger quantities and send it to the top of the hill with a generator-powered pump. Hey, water. It was great because if the power went out, we still had water. We finally dug a well and installed a water softener. I don't want to get too excited. I know. It's hard, right? It's hard. But when the well drill is getting excited, it's hard to not feel the excitement. It is. It's exciting. It's an exciting day. But because the well stands alone, we still have to run hoses around the property to put the softened water in our storage tanks. Today, we begin the long-awaited project of connecting the well to the house, which will make life a bit easier. Goodbye, hoses. About 92 to there. And then if we go up around the side of the house, we can kind of stay out of the driveway here and then hook around inside the house. Our system will be pretty elaborate, but we'll be able to run off the well directly as well as have 2,000 gallons of treated water on hand in the event of a power outage. Being conservative, that would last a long time. It sounds so simple, but in reality, this project, like everything else, is layered and we're trying to plan ahead and kill multiple birds with one stone. So this is a really rough layout of the property. Our well's here, and what we need to do is trench from the well along the slope here, around the side of the house, and into a sleeve that we poured into the concrete when we poured our foundation. And that will take us right into the mechanical room, and then we have a lot of work to do in the mechanical room to get the water flowing into the house plumbing. We're also planning on installing a couple of frost-free hydrants while we're at it. We're gonna tap the line and put one out here by the well. That way we can irrigate or whatever we need to do on this side of the property without running hoses across the driveway. We're thinking in the future we may have some small orchard or some trees along here for fruit. And then we're gonna place another hydrant over here in the corner for irrigating this area or washing equipment or cars. And we're eventually going to have our wood-fired boiler over here. And so we're going to be installing a couple of additional things in these trenches. We're going to be installing thermopex in this trench too, and that's going to connect to the wood boiler that will help with the radiant heating system. And that also will need electricity, so we're going to bury a conduit. And that makes sure that we're basically primed, so whenever we get that wood boiler installed, we've got everything there just to connect it up. The thing about this project is this sleeve we only want to dig up once because we're going to have to expose the drain rock on the house and it's very layered. We're working on a hot tub project that we've kind of kept top secret. And what we're going to do is connect our hot tub to our radiant system. And when we get this wood fired boiler connected, it's actually going to heat the hot tub for us. And so our wood fired hot tub is going to be history. All right, so we're going to have to trench also for this thermal pex that's going to end up at the hot tub. And because of that, we only want to trench one time here at the corner of the house. So we're going to add this project to the water line. As you can see, it's never as simple as, oh, I'm just going to dig a line and stick a well into my house and be done with it. We do have to cross a couple of things. We've got power to the well and a footing drain. So we'll be working through those things. This project is going to be absolutely massive. It's probably going to take us 
three or four days minimum just to get this portion done well and get into the house. And then in the future, we'll work on getting everything hooked up inside the house. As a temporary measure, we just put a uh, spigot on the end of this well, and we've been able to just cycle it with the breaker. The uh, well person is coming. We're going to get this dug up, and they're going to install a pitless adapter well below grade so that it will be frost-proof, and we'll have to get this all fixed up. But we're going to start working on getting the trenching done. I had to spend a lot of time doing a bunch of ornate measuring because we need to make sure that we have enough 2-inch poly to make this happen. If you jump back to our original water system, videos, you'll see us using this two inch poly on our gravity fed water system from the top of the hill down to this two inch fire hydrant. We actually have a bunch of it left over because the type of pipe that we're using, which allows us to use compression fittings, is only available in a 500 foot roll. So we bought the mother load when we did our original water system and we've had this laying around for years. It'll be awesome to go ahead and use it up. A project of this magnitude would have scared the living daylight out of us five years ago. But since we now have the know-how and the tools for the most part, it simply comes down to doing the work. All right, that sleeve is seven feet from the top of the ICF, so we gotta go down four and a half feet to find it. Uh, it's got a white cap on it. Yep, that's it. Nice. it we are there a little bit of shoveling to do yeah a little shoveling to do otherwise looks awesome This hydrant goes down in there mm -hmm. and probably we'll turn it this way. Okay. All right, so we're down to the monster poly fittings. If you wanna learn more about these or kind of how to use them, we did a lot of video way back on our original water system talking about these fittings and the design and why they are a good alternative to brass. Um, so if you haven't seen those videos, we'll link to the playlist, go back and watch the original water system and kind of see how we use these in all different sizes, all the way down to three quarter. They have ball valves, couplers, tees, saddle tees, everything. And the nice thing is you can do a lot of stuff that you can't do with brass. So give that a check, it's super interesting. So basically this is a two inch compression to two inch iron pipe, uh, female iron pipe. And that'll come off the end of our fitting in the house. And then we'll put our two inch ball valve on the end there. Here's a two inch main. We're gonna use this to isolate the well. That way we can actually turn the well off and run the water backwards in our system. We'll talk about that more later in a future video. This T is gonna be at the well so that we could feed a hypothetical shop that doesn't even exist yet. And then we're gonna T this direction to the house. And we'll need a coupler to connect the valve there to that. And I think that'll just about do 
everything. Oh, and then this 90 is for inside the house so that we can angle down and we don't have a two inch pipe sticking too far out of the wall. So we have four PEX lines, one, two, three, four, and two conduits. So let's go, let's go here, 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 and here. Sure hope I didn't glue that on there. Ooh. Okay, and I think we're gonna put the water on the bottom. That's it. That's the one. Uh-oh. Might have to go inside and see what just fell over. Good. How much you have in there? Okay, two feet? Yeah. That's plenty. I only need like six inches, so. Okay. Wow, that's a freaking big achievement, guys. We got her done. It makes me feel good. Nice. It's gonna be nice to have a hydrant over here. If we put this valve directly on the T, it'd be really cool if we could put that valve about right there and then put that fitting on there, which would bring us to about here with the pitless adapter and the two to whatever bushing. I'll bet we could probably get a nipple long enough to connect everything up and that'll save us from using a coupler and another length of pipe it'll cut two fittings and it'll put our valve pretty close to the well casing which works out pretty nice well, we don't have a lot of choices where this is going to end up so we'll go ahead and cut this here and then we'll run the tracer wire um, up the well casing that'll work and then we need a piece of two inch it's about four feet long or so, and then we'll cap there, we'll saddle tee off there, and go to that hydrant. Okay, all right, look at that. We're in business.
Last one. Oh my gosh, that's heavy. Ugh. Moment of truth. Doesn't look to me like we're getting any pressure. So we got a leak somewhere. Uh, I think I hear it. That sucks. I thought we inspected this thing. I might wonder if it's right where your yellow mark is. Yep, looks like I found it. it is a nick in the pipe. We do have a coupler. I think usually that's frowned upon, but in this case we don't really have a choice. Let me know if you're building any pressure. Um, I don't think so. Dang, that sucks. Uh, maybe blow air for a second. I'm just going to walk from the house to the end. Okay, found another leak. And ironically, it's right where we spray painted. I'm wondering if we replace the section of pipe after the coupling, if we have enough pipe we might be able to replace this section down to the valve and maybe get rid of that piece and maybe we're in luck. Yeah, we got a crap ton of pipe left. Yeah, if we can just find a good section, maybe we're in luck. So here we are this morning. We're gonna try to uh, replace the bad section of poly with the remaining pipe but we're gonna be a little smarter this time. We're gonna test it before we put it in there. We knew there were some nicks and dings and things in it, but we thought we could probably use it. So hopefully this section is good to go. Got a leak? Yep. Okay. Yep. Nick in the pipe. That's not even a small nick. That's like a crack. Without the bend being factored in, we're 48 feet. Right there. And it looks like we're about 60 feet over here. Um, so I'm kind of scratching my head. Do we just abandon the two inch poly? And right now we just go to inch and a quarter poly. And that means they have to, we, we have to rebuild the hydrant fittings. Uh, but it poses another problem that the two inch solved. Um, but maybe we should test that piece of poly over there after that break and see if it's good first. And then we can make a decision. The real problem is that we want to be able to isolate the well and underground valves are horrifically expensive in brass and this two inch poly system they have obviously a two inch underground valve that's very high quality they're serial numbered and so because we're using the two inch we have the ability to use that valve I guess what we could do is if we just can't find a good enough section of pipe we could put a fitting on here and just go to inch and a quarter poly after that. And then we'd have to just redo one hydrant. That would be acceptable. Versus having to just rebuild this whole thing in inch and a quarter and find a valve that's gonna do that job in brass. I'm not sure that that's something we even want to explore. Unfortunately, we, we, can't, we keep finding problems and we keep fixing them and then we keep finding more problems. So there's some spray paint here and that's I believe where I found the leak last night. Yet another ding in the pipe. So we must have really manhandled this stuff because this stuff's practically indestructible. So I'm not sure what happened to it, but we've got leaks. So if we can get from here to there without any leaks and the system will hold air for a while, I feel good about all those fittings. We're coming across 20 pounds, 25 pounds, 50 pounds. Well, we're holding 50 pounds on this section of pipe, which is good. Unfortunately, we're what, 20 feet short, something like that. So unfortunately, we're gonna have to put a fitting in there, but I think we're gonna do this a little bit smarter. We're way more rested 
it's not 92 degrees in the direct sun right now. So we're gonna cut this pipe over here at the damage, put the air fitting on one side, the valve on the other, test that section, isolate that, make sure there's no more leaks, and then do the same thing over here at the well, make sure there's no more leaks. And if that's all good, then the only leak we have is that break in the pipe, at which point one fitting and we're in business. We're coming up in pressure already. Let's see if it'll just hold that 10 there. Nope. Losing pressure. Yeah, I found it. The big one. So we got another break in the two inch poly is what you're telling me. Yep. Another one. Holy sh Wow. Getting punished. Can't even see it. Can't get at it. On the bottom there? Yeah. Okay. Right there. Okay. Well, it's feeling like this was a huge mistake. Well, it was a huge mistake. I'm not sure what we could have done differently. I'm, the, the, the pace and the circumstances under which we do a lot of these projects, a person sitting in their uh, armchair in their living room would be quick to judgment. But I'll tell you, out here in the field, when you're in the trenches and the dust and the heat, your brain doesn't work as well. And so here we are, here we are. We've got a bunch of crap two inch poly put a bunch of money into fittings trying to save the poly and here now we're going to have to go back to inch and a quarter. I just don't think it makes any sense to have all of these fittings under the ground to make this pipe work. So I think we're going to air test down here at the well make sure that our valve, our cap and the hydrant all down, down there work and then we're going to have to go buy inch and a quarter poly and we'll have to couple down there at the well and then we'll have to just redo this hydrant. We'll put in a T and then we'll come into the house inch and a quarter. It's gonna be just as good. Unfortunately, all this poly, after trying to save it, it's going to the dump. Pressure's coming up. They're 10 pounds already. There's 50. If it'll hold 20, it'll hold 50, right? <laughs> so we're good from there. So we can just go to inch and a quarter poly there and we'll just go have to refit that other hydrant. I guess that's the least of all evils right there. Double work sucks, but we sleep well at night knowing we do things as right as possible. <sighs> the inch and a quarter fit into the two inch poly like a glove, helping us get into the house. We got lucky, I guess. Thank goodness. Should have everything now to connect everything up. Pressure's coming up already, so that's a good sign. 45, and there's about 50. We got a winner. Everything's good. Uh, we got photographs and everything for the inspector. We've got our tracer wire redone. We had to undo that. And so now I think we need to shift to just getting one leg of the thermal PEX installed and a leg of conduit for a future wood boiler that we're gonna put out here to heat the house on our radiant panel. That's a totally different video, but we've gotta get those two things done and then we're ready to backfill this trench up to the well. And then we'll have to wait for the well guy to get over here and make the final connection and then we'll have water in the house. It's said that this Thermopex is so efficient that it only loses about one degree of heat per 100 feet. It's also extremely expensive. Of course, there's DIY ideas to accomplish the same thing, but we're choosing to go expensive for top quality.
As with all plumbing projects, we first backfill with sand because our soil is rocky as heck. The poly is rated for direct berry. Would we be fine if we didn't backfill with sand? Probably. But we're never willing to take that risk and never want to dig the system up again. The cost of sand and a little extra labor is a small price to pay as insurance. Hundred and eighty-five feet of trench bedded with sand. That feels amazing. Now these extremely inconsiderate rocks can fall in all night. Don't care. We're going to get pizza. So the mission today is get this backfilled and then we wait for the well guy. Man, feels so good to get this well finally connected. The well was a huge life upgrade and getting it connected to the house is only going to continue that. We look forward to getting everything plumbed in on the inside. We're not there yet. We have a lot of, lot of work to do. We have a lot of the components, but for now, this is the big animal, is getting all these trenching projects done and getting everything backfilled and buried while the weather's still prime. Uh, we did do a pressure test on the well the other day when we had the uh, pitless adapter put in and everything held pressure good. So I think we're good to go and we got the rubber stamp from the powers that be to backfill everything. So we're ready to put this thing to bed and then we probably ought to get the system flushed because we're still going to have to use kind of our monkey motion a cistern filling strategy temporarily until we get everything put together on the inside. Just like with our other water system, we're going to use this sleeve to cover the valve and we have a water key that we built for the other main that shuts off the cisterns to the house. So we'll get this set and then we can start bedding the pipe in sand. Oh, 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 oh,
Hallelujah. And after days of work, things look, well, about how they did before. A job well done. Okay, go ahead and turn the valve on. Okay, looking really good. Go ahead and turn that valve back off for me. Clean up all these rocks. They're all dirty. Got one of these dirty rocks around here. 